know you play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. What's that? Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs. You kidding me? Playoffs? I just hope we can win a game. Get out there, play hard, enjoy those games. Welcome in to Go Big or Go Home. I'm old man Troy, joined by the marvelous youngster, Kevin Cunningham, a.k.a. Kid Tunney. Or the early bird this week. Got to get up early tomorrow, don't you, youngster? I do. I do indeed. Um, I start my shifts at my job at, it could be 4 a.m., it could be 9 a.m., it could be 2 p.m. So I, I'm used to being, you know, kind of whenever in terms of when I have to show up to work. So it is what it is on my end. Yeah, one day, one day you'll get a, like, consistent 3 a.m. wake-up call and have to go to work for 10 years at 3 a.m. Or get up at 3 a.m. to go to work. Oh, good. Oh, good. We got we to gotta, so gotta tell the listeners. So we had, we had a nice discussion before about my early bird time. And then we had some technical difficulties. So this is take two on the show. We're okay with that. But a big week in the Big Ten, youngster. A lot of games that may have implications on the college football rankings that, of course, come out tomorrow. But you got to go over your AP top 25. I don't give a crap about those, but I give a crap about the ones tomorrow. I really do. I care about those. Yeah. Yeah. So go through the AP top 25, and then I'm going to hoot and holler when you get down to receiving votes. I'm going to get down there. I'm going to hoot and holler. So go ahead. Uh, So, again, this is November 1st that we are recording the show on a Monday. The first official college football playoff rankings come out on Tuesday the 2nd. So these rankings that I'm about to share with you for the next 20 seconds, you shouldn't really care about them. (laughs) By the time you're listening to this show, I will tell them to you right now. The last AP rankings for Week 10, Michigan State is 5, Ohio State is 6, Michigan 9. And then you have to go down to Iowa at 19, Penn State at 22, and then you got two teams in the Big Ten receiving votes, Wisconsin and Minnesota. There really? You know, and, and who's winning the Big Ten? Who's winning the Big Ten West? Uh, I believe that's uh, Minnesota, I believe. And who's in second place in the Big Ten West? I will have to look it up. All right, that would be Wisconsin, and who just beat Iowa? Yeah, I was in uh, Purdue. No, I'm saying, but who just beat Iowa? You, you've yeah. got receiving votes for Wisconsin and Minnesota. And you've got Wisconsin at number two, Minnesota at number one. Iowa's lost two in a row, lost to Purdue, lost to Wisconsin just because their record sucks. Wisconsin manhandled Iowa. So you're going to say Iowa's still a better team than Wisconsin? I don't think so. This is why these polls suck. This is ridiculous. It should be the other way around. Wisconsin 19, Iowa receiving votes. This is the problem. The problem with the AP top 25. Wisconsin clearly showed Saturday, we are much better than your Iowa team, Kirk Ferentz. Much better. Uh-huh. And they lost to Purdue the week before. So why are they 19 and Wisconsin's not even in the top 25? And I'm not being a badger homer about this. This is the problem. You're looking at, oh, my God, Wisconsin's only 5-3, and three, and Iowa's only got two losses. Guess what? Wisconsin is a better team than Iowa. Clearly. Yeah. Son, I, I just I had to rant. And Minnesota – Nobody, you and I didn't expect Minnesota youngster to be at top of the Big Ten West seven games into the season or eight games no. into the season, whatever, whatever they have. I didn't. No. I really didn't. No. But I, and are they better than Iowa? Maybe not. But they're number one in the Big Ten West. How can you yeah. not have them in the top 25? They've lost. This is why I'm, I'm done. I got, I got to take a drink of Rockstar. Give me your explanation. 
give me a logical explanation as to why the top two teams in the Big Ten West are not even in the top 25. Well, it's only because, well, I can't answer that question. Um, but Iowa was number two a couple weeks ago. They lost one game. They fell to nine. They lost another game. Now they're 19. So, I mean, people still think they're good. Um, you know, one game, you can say, I guess, that doesn't mean that because X team beats Y team that X is automatically better. Um, upsets always happen. So, therefore, some people will still rank Iowa ahead of Wisconsin. That's the only logic that I can think of. Um, but, again, we'll see college football playoff rankings um, when they come out tomorrow on Tuesday, November 2nd. That's, I, you know. <laughs> can I throw a I side bet of... down? Can I throw a side bet down, youngster? And I just, I just want to throw this out between you and I. And maybe the listeners. The listeners on the Inner Peak Coffee studio line. Find us on Twitter at Youngster Old Man, at Troy Robert 967, at Kid Cunny. I think the football committee, Youngster, is going to put Wisconsin at like 14. I really believe that. Um, that's kind of high, but. You think it's kind of no. high? Yeah, I do. Look at the. And again, I'm not being a Wisconsin homer. Look in the Big Ten West. Who who has the best defense in the Big Ten West? Maybe Wisconsin. Iowa? No, I think Wisconsin. Maybe Iowa. I Maybe. mean, Wisconsin got a couple turnovers. But if you look at Wisconsin, that's the thing. People are looking at a 5-3 and three record. This I Wisconsin team, good. actually, youngster, could be 7-1. and one. They could be 7-1. and one. If they are 7-1, and one, would they be a top-10 team? I'm just saying. Yeah, they would. Yeah, they would. And you and I have talked about college football, the landscape this year. There is no dominating team in the country, right? So Wisconsin loses week one against Penn State, but they dominated that game for, what, three quarters and lost to Penn State in the fourth quarter. This Wisconsin team actually should be should be seven and one. So I'm a little pissed off as a Badger fan that they're five and three. So I, I'm saying, are they the 14th best best team in the country? I believe they are. I really do. With that defense, offensively, yeah, they suck. But they got this kid Allen that just dominated Iowa, and they're supposed to be great. Just saying. All right, carry Wisconsin, on. Go however you want. I'm just with, I, I, I'm throwing it out there. We'll see where the college football rankings put them. Wisconsin has won four straight now. Their next three games are Rutgers, New York, Northwestern, and Nebraska. They should win seven straight. Um, their final game is at Minnesota. That yep. may be the So they control the, their own destiny yeah. to get to the yeah. Big Ten championship game. Yes. So, you know, it, it may come down to that last game at Minnesota. Um, it probably will. I don't see why it wouldn't, to be honest with you at this point. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see the college football playoff rankings a day from now. Uh, moving on to our locks of the week a week ago, of course, we had one lock, and, of course, it lost. Uh, we had Iowa plus three and a half. We figured Iowa might be able to – beat Wisconsin, and in the end, Iowa lost by 20. So, by the way, the over-under on that game was 36.5, if I remember correctly, and the two teams combined for 34. So, the under on that ridiculously low over-under actually still came through. Um, which didn't, I say to, didn't I say to take the under on that? I can't remember. I'd have to go listen to I the don't. show. Yeah. I don't remember. I, I, I but, think uh, I did. Yeah, that's a very low score, but what happens when you have two really good defense? So, I realistically, Troy, the best thing in this year's version of college football is Georgia's defense. Uh, they haven't allowed 14 points to a single team yet, and they've played good offenses, like offenses that have proven themselves over eight games that are, are really dynamic, um, and Georgia's defense hasn't allowed 14 points yet. So uh, this year is different than the last five or six 
Um, this is this is the most interesting college football playoff year I can remember. Um, and I'm an Ohio State fan. Ohio State won the first college football playoff, but it, it's it's a lot different than this year. Feels a lot different than past years because, like I said, I think the most known dominating thing in college football is Georgia's defense. <laughs> it's not a team's offense. It's not a team's quarterback. Um, it's a defense, which. I can't remember the last time that was a thing. You look at college football title games, and they're not 17-10. They're in the 30s and 40s <laughs> um, these last few years because you've just had such ridiculously elite offenses. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see when Georgia plays Alabama. It'll be interesting to see when whoever play, Georgia plays whoever. Um, you know, if their only loss is to Alabama, I assume they make the playoff this year, especially this year, because there's not going to be a bunch of other one-loss teams to say, oh, yeah, we're definitely better than Georgia, if their only loss is to a team who will inevitably be in the playoff, if it's one-loss Alabama. Um, So, whatever, we'll see. (laughs) A month or so from now, uh, when it all shakes out. But, so... Our locks so far this year are 5 and 10. Good for us. Fantastic. We're on a roll. Uh, we're doing just like we have done, you know, the last year plus, uh, which is not very good. So there's money to be had. Just go away from whatever we to do. Last week in the Big Ten, there were three big games. I'm actually going to start with those three. Um, Wisconsin did beat Iowa. Wisconsin was at home 27 to seven was the final score there. Um, it was 20 to nothing at half. Graham Mertz, I mean, we said it going into the game, Troy, that it was going to come down to Graham Mertz making big throws. And at the end of the day, he was 11 of 22 for 100 yards, and they won by 20. Um, and that's all because of Wisconsin's defense. <laughs> it's not because of an overpowering running game. Um, you know, it, Wisconsin ran the ball fine. Um, and Graham Mertz, again, was 11 of 22. So, you know, he certainly didn't win the game either. He was making – I watched a lot of the game, and he was making some decent throws. But, again, when you're completing 50% of your passes, that's – you you can just see that he has more talent um, than guys like Jack Cohn that we've talked about on this show before. Um, it's just truly a matter of consistency, really. Um, and if you're only throwing it 12 times a game, there's only so much you can do. So, I mean, at the end of the day, he's going to have to throw a third and long against some good team. It's just a matter of when, um, you know. But in any case, uh, Wisconsin had zero turnovers in this game. Iowa had three. That's, you know, that's truly. That was your, the big thing. I text you. Yeah. Nothing like some gifts, right? You're, I'm, not gonna apo- I'm not going to apologize for the gifts. No. Ohio, I mean, I, you put Iowa a finger out and you got a finger on a football, guess what? You probably shouldn't have tried to catch a ball you couldn't catch. That That's what I'm going to say. Because, I, I mean, I, I stayed off social media, youngster. That doesn't mean I troll. Don't troll. I go troll, and I just keep my fingers to myself. Right. Iowa had 156 yards of total offense. That is absolutely atrocious, um, no matter what level of football you're talking about. That's bad. But, yeah, Wisconsin's defense, like I said, I think it's the best defense in realistically all the Big Ten. Um, it might be second in the country to Georgia. I, I don't know. But and I wouldn't go that high. You said I was high on where I would rank them. That's, I'd put them in the top five. That, that defense, I mean – Granted, it was Iowa, but they did the same thing. Yeah. My, my problem early in the season, and this is why that defense is not getting the, the praise they got from years before, is because the offense can't get first downs. If, if yeah. they had an effective offense that could move the ball with that defense, they would be in the top ten. They would be seven and one. That is the problem. That defense goes out there and shuts down everyone, and then the offense goes three and out. And they almost let Iowa back in this game because the defense 
giving them short fields, and they're kicking damn field goals. This game, right. youngster, actually could have been forty something to seven. Yeah, it could have been. It could have been forty to nothing. What do you say? They had one hundred and fifty total yards. Yeah, and I again, I watched. I watched the game, and I know you texted me during the game, and I apologize for not texting you back. I Mother. left my phone in another room on purpose. I'm like, nobody <laughs> is interrupting me during this game. I've got my adult beverages. I'm watching the game. I'll look at my phone after the game. I figured. I, I was actually, I was happy they won, but I'm pissed off they won because they should have dominated. It should have been like 42 to, okay, give them the seven. 42 to seven, not 20 to seven. They started in Iowa territory so many times, and that's the problem. The offense is hurting that defense. Yeah, it is an elite college defense, and that's why I look at the next three games plus Minnesota. Honestly, youngster, I'm looking at it that Wisconsin is going to be in the Big Ten championship game. I think they can beat Minnesota. With that defense, I really believe it. That's all I'm going to say. I'm just – I'm mad at my Badgers. They should be 7-1. and one. They should have beat Iowa by, like, 40 points. That's all. I'm, I'm done. Carry on. They would Next They game. would have a real chance at the um, – they would easily make it. I, I don't know if they <clears> – <throat> I, I, I guess we'll see where they're ranked um, and what happens ahead of them. But three losses is a lot uh, to overcome. They were well, all they're not over. making the college football playoff, youngster, but I'm saying they're going to win ranked, the Big Ten West. Troy, if they're they're going to win out. If they're ranked 14th, they win the next four. They're going to move into the top ten, and then if you play a Ohio State who's ranked fourth in the country, third in the country, second in the country, then, I mean, and their last loss was week four of the season for Wisconsin. So, I mean, I think at that point you can make an argument they're a top-four team if they win their last nine games, <laughs> you know, or eight games. Not going that far. No, I'm not going that far. I don't think far. so either, but I, I think it's possible this year. Um, if there were a year <laughs> where it's possible, I think winning your last eight could give you a chance. Um, anyway, moving on to – why did I – okay, I had the wrong tag moment. Um <laughs> Michigan, Michigan State, the game was at Michigan State. Michigan led in this game. It was 30-22 to 22 going into the fourth. Michigan led by double digits a few times. They led 10 nothing at the end of the first. Um, <laughs> Michigan's quarterback ran for th- or ran. He threw for 383 yards, Cade McNamara. Um, Michigan did what they wanted to and needed to offensively by scoring 33 points. The problem was stopping Kenneth Walker III, which has been a problem for basically everybody this year, and that's why Michigan State is now 8-0. Walker had not only 197 yards rushing, he had five touchdowns against what is a pretty good Michigan defense. Um, so, you know, he's really good. We, we knew that before. Uh, this, you know, I guess only confirmed it. I I didn't need confirmation, but <laughs> Kenneth Walker is really good. Um, and uh, you could argue he is he is certainly a Heisman finalist, in my opinion, uh, because he is truly carrying this Michigan State offense, um, and he's putting up five touchdowns against top ten ranked teams. So, Hey, youngster, how do yeah. you think Jim Harbaugh would look in black and silver? Yeah, I can see that. I'm just saying, I I know the Raiders need a coach, and Mm -hmm. he just lost to Michigan State, and there's an Ohio State. By the way, Troy, Mel Tucker is the first Michigan State coach ever in program history to start his tenure at Michigan State 2-0 against Michigan. No other Michigan State coach has ever started 2-0 against Michigan. Mel Tucker has. Good old Wisconsin alum, Mel Tucker. He's doing a hell of a job there. He really is. Michigan should have won this game, right? I was on the Harbaugh bandwagon, like, okay, he's turned the program around. But I was watching the highlights of this game, and then there's Michigan. Oh, they're they're winning going into the, 
you know, late into the game, fourth quarter, you had another meltdown. Yeah. And you know what? It's 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 one thing if you lose this game, right? It really is. But holy cow! I I just don't understand. Hey, youngster, I gotta bow out for two seconds. Car- carry on. No worries. Uh, yeah, Michigan State was up thir- or sixteen in this game. At one point in the third quarter, I believe it was. Um, and Michigan State's quarterback, Peyton Thorne, has he was just 19 of 30, zero touchdowns, two picks, and they still won the game. Again, thank you, Kenneth Walker. So, uh, Moving on from that game, I, I still think Michigan's a good team. But, again, at the end of the day, Jim Harbaugh is losing to Michigan State or Ohio State or a really good Penn State team or a really good Wisconsin team like – at the end of the day, Michigan is just not getting over the hump in these big games. And that's it's becoming apparent once again in 2021. Moving on to the other big game, um, it was Saturday night, Ohio State at home against Penn State. Ohio State won the game 33-24. to Ohio State's defense, I mean, bend but don't break, opportunistic, whatever you want to, you know, say, I – yeah, you held Penn State to 24 points. Yeah, you held them scoreless in the fourth quarter. Is Ohio State's defense better today than it was week one? Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, they've changed, you know, who calls the plays defensively since the first month of the year. Um, so it is different. Um, it is getting better. But Ohio State's defense is still not good. It still has talent. It's still not a good defense. This is still the worst Ohio State defense I can remember in a while. Um, But because of their offense, it doesn't need to be good in terms of arguably winning the whole Big Ten. Um, We will see if Ohio State does have to play a team like Wisconsin um, where it's going to be hard to score 30. Um, maybe Ohio State puts up 24-27, and it's going to be up to Ohio State's defense to hold a team like Wisconsin, hold a team like Michigan State from scoring 28, 31 points, Um, and maybe that's how Ohio State will lose its first Big Ten game under Ryan Day. Um, But to this point, it it seems like Ohio State's offense is pretty much rolling. It's not perfect, but it's rolling. Um, And defensively, they're fine, and that's you know that's that's kind of where Ohio State's at right now. Um, I was impressed with Penn State and how gritty they were. I'm not how just how they stayed in this game. I heard. <laughs> um, I was going to kick it off to you in a second, uh, but yeah, I, I was impressed with Penn State and how they were able to keep it close for as long as they did. Um, but you know, Ohio State is just. They're just a better team. But, again, once it comes down to playing elite teams back-to-back-to-back, that's, I think, where Ohio State will eventually falter. But, um, yeah, that's – that being said, this is not a usual college football year where you have to play multiple elite teams because arguably there is none. So, (laughs) we'll see. But Ohio State's got, you know, Michigan State, Michigan, and – Whoever wins the Big Ten West still ahead of them. So there are big games to be had, and we'll find out more about the defense in particular um, when those games roll around for the Bucs. So you were going over that Ohio State game. I was watching that game, and, you know, Penn State, youngster, they hung in there, though. They played tough. Yeah. You, know, you, you give J- James Franklin credit, I think he's gone. I really believe he's either going to USC or LSU. I think he's gone. I really believe he's going to bolt. I think he's going to bolt out. Of, to me, Troy, seriously, I think he truly loves being at Penn State. I, I think it would take a loads of money or boosters saying, we're tired of losing to Ohio State over and over and over and over again. Um, so maybe he gets, quote, unquote, forced out that way. I, I just don't see him leaving for another college program, really, unless they no. offer him. 50% more pay. And you're telling me that USC can't do that and USC doesn't no, want to can't. do that? You're not wrong. <laughs> you're not wrong. Has USC named a coach yet, youngster? 
Not to my knowledge. And I'm just, I'm just saying, Penn State, James Franklin, I, I love what he's done at Penn State. I love it. The, the guy took over the reins, kind of that guy, after they weathered the storm, got through all of the turmoil that was at Penn State, brought them back to national prominence. And now you've got a USC program that had a bunch of turmoil. Pete Carroll was there, blah, blah, blah. I'm just saying, you're on the West Coast, you got boosters, you got NFL, you got all these guys that are going to give the money, you know, and this whole thing about boosters and what they do, James Franklin, is they're going to go after him hard, and I, I don't disagree with you. I would agree. He loves being at Penn State, but when you look at Pac-10, USC, Who's he, who's he got to compete with out there? And the way he's recruited at Penn State, which not a bad job, right? Not a bad history at Penn State, but not a bad history at USC either. No, you can recruit. But do you USC. have an? Do you have an? Uh, do you have an Ohio State in the Pac-10? Pac-12, Troy. No, you don't. Our Pac Pac-12. <laughs> Sorry, I'm 50 years old. It's the Pac-10. Uh, we'll survive. Who, who's the dominant team there? Who's the team yeah, that no. you, oh, my God, you're never going to beat the, you got to beat this team, this is a team. Nobody can beat this team. Who's that team, youngster? USC should be the dominating team out there. Um, so you just so, answered my question. Why yeah. wouldn't they throw another five, six million dollars on top of his yearly salary and make him the yeah. highest paid coach in, in college football? Yeah. Why not? No. Yeah. If, if I'm USC and I'm the boosters and that athletic director and I want Franklin, I'm giving him what he wants. You want $40 right. million a year, we'll give you $40 million a year. Because we want to go, we want to be in the playoff. 40 I, I, and I, I don't know who wouldn't. Yeah, I'm being sarcastic, million. young sir. I really <laughs> am. But why wouldn't you? James Franklin yeah. is a proven commodity. What he's yeah. done and the way he recruits, the yeah. guy could be – Literally a Roman god at USC. He could be the Trojan god. If I was USC athletic director, I would do everything in my power to go get him. Now, I don't know what the buyout is at Penn State. I don't know what the parameters are of the contract. But if I'm USC, that's who I'm targeting. LSU, eh, yeah, whatever. I mean, but when you're in that conference – why couldn't USC be the Ohio State of that conference? They yeah. could be. And if We've James Franklin was there, I believe they would be. Yeah. I mean, I lived in Pennsylvania, and I was there when he got hired. I've seen what he did to that team firsthand. Being out in Pennsylvania with Penn State right out there, being near Pittsburgh, all the, the stories and everything – I got to know that program very well. The guy's done nothing but success, and the way he recruits, I I don't know. I thought they played well, Ohio State. Yeah, they're a better team, as I heard on the end of what you were saying. I didn't think Penn State would win, but they hung in there. For a while there, you might have been sweating because they were in the game with Ohio State. Yeah. It takes a lot for me to get nervous with Ohio State losing a game um, because it rarely happens. It has to basically get into the fourth quarter. And in the fourth quarter, yeah, it, it, I was nervous <laughs> that Penn State was going to win. Um, so, yeah, it, they pushed Ohio State um, to me as much as they basically could have. But well, And really they're a good cause... team. And where, where they are, they're the second-best team in the big – well, they, Michigan State is there, but, I mean – We'd have to see. Penn State is good. They're they're a good football team this year. There. So carry on. Uh, so past those three, we'll get into these other four ones very quickly. Uh, Rutgers went to Illinois. Good for Rutgers. They won a Big Ten game this year, uh, twenty to fourteen. They were actually trailing fourteen to ten going into the fourth, and then Rutgers pulled it out and won 20 to 14. Um, so that's Rutgers' first Big Ten win, and we said that this they should win this game. Um, it, it took a lot, but they did. Um, so 
good for Rutgers there. Not going to get into anything more because we want to keep this show rolling. We went over the big three games already from last week, and we want to talk about the games ahead. But also, uh, Maryland over Indiana. Maryland was at home 38-35, and at this point, I mean, Indiana's 0-5 in the Big Ten. They are the only team without a win in the Big Ten this year, and Indiana's problems really were their offense, uh, especially without Penix at quarterback. Um, but they scored 35 points in this game with their realistically third-string quarterback, and they still lost. And part of that is because you play a good offense, and Taulia threw for 419 yards in this game without his number one receiver. We talked about that. We've talked about that in the past. Um, it didn't matter. Uh, he still threw for 400 <laughs> in this game. So hey, this is just not Indiana's, and part of it is scheduling. Um, but you could make an argument that if you're a good team, then you go to Maryland and win. Um, it's hard because this Maryland team does have a real offense this year, but if you're a good team, you, you win this game. Um, so Indiana, you know, and they were right there. They well, after there. last year, youngster, and the hype at Indiana, now you're looking at it, I would guarantee they're like, well, what the hell is going on in Indiana? You, you, you were bought into that team, and they had a great year last year. I wasn't yeah. so high on them in the preseason rankings because I, it's prove it again. You had one great year, prove it again. It's kind of like yeah. Northwestern over in the Big Ten West. They, they do really well for a year or two, then they're down, and maybe that's the way Indiana's going to be, but maybe. you got to prove it. You had one good year after, you know, how many bad years, and, there, and the yeah. expectations get high, and now, now you don't even have a win in the Big Ten. So it's just kind of like, okay, it's old Indiana football now. We'll wait for basketball season, which actually has started, though, youngster. College basketball is uh, starting to ramp up. we got to do our preview show soon. We do. Uh, next week, if you're on vacation, we should probably we should hammer that out realistically. Yeah, maybe, maybe we I should. Think. Yes, we, we will. Depending on your work schedule. you got to remember, I'm out. old. I'm old, yeah. and I'm in a power of position. However... Yeah, I get interrupted. Like, I got interrupted with a work phone call. My, I'm a 24-hour-a-day on-call guy. So we'll If see. you're able to do shows some mornings and afternoon, you know, then, yeah, we'll, we'll make it happen. Uh, we'll do that. Just got to clear it. Got to clear it with the, the miss. <laughs> which side? Should I call her the Mrs. Old Man? Oh, she would kill me. <laughs> Kill me. Just, just call her. This is, just this... call her old woman, Troy. Oh, call her. Oh woman. yeah, that'll really go over well. Yeah, that'll be. Well, fantastic. we're already grandparents. <laughs> I've already accepted yeah. the fact I'm a grandpa. I'm an old man. She's uh-huh. got to accept the fact she's a grandma. She's got to be an old woman. Yeah, I, I just wouldn't say that. Um, so anyway, <laughs> you can say it to her. You can That's say it to her on social media. You know, Troy, I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Uh, Minnesota. <laughs> Minnesota at Northwestern. Minnesota won the game 41-14. They are 6-2 and two overall. They are 4-1 and one in the Big Ten. They scored 21 points in the fourth quarter to lock this win in the bag. Minnesota lost, I don't believe it was their third string running back because they already lost their first two. However, they did lose a third running back on their roster for a, another season-ending injury. So they have now technically lost three running backs, their top two for sure. Uh, and they're the in first place in the Big Ten, and, Big yes. Ten West. Exactly. Um, which, by the way, again, like we've mentioned on this show, it goes to show that Minnesota's offensive line is really good. And that was – we knew that coming into the year, uh, that this was truly a really good offensive line. We um, didn't think they were a Big Ten West champion, though. No, we did not. But no, and I'll admit yeah. that. I, didn't think, I did not think Minnesota would have – the year, even if they would have had their top running back, we didn't think they'd be atop the Big Ten West. No. We thought they'd be okay, but my gosh, what they're doing, and, it, and I'm going to do this, a couple years ago, the Gopher Jinx, I'm not going to talk about Minnesota, but I still think Wisconsin is better. I still think Wisconsin is better. Overall, but I'm not gonna, yeah. I'm not going to sit here and I'm not going to praise the Gophers because 
the Gopher fans that are listening are, are like, old man, shut up. Don't talk. Don't say they're good. Don't say they're going to do this because of where they're at. So I'm going to just be mute now, youngster. But I did not think Minnesota would be where they're at right now. It'll be fun to see Minnesota um, against Wisconsin. I wish Ibrahim was healthy. Um, that would have made it more fun. But I actually hope they both went out. I actually yeah, hope they too. both went out in Wisconsin or Minnesota's one game ahead of Wisconsin at the last game. So that game means everything. I yeah. want that. Wouldn't that be great for college football also, youngster? Yes, it would. To have that game be that meaningful, the yeah. last game of the year, to win the Big Ten West, the Big Ten couldn't hope for anything better than that because the Big right. Ten East is going to be long decided before then. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Potentially. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, da, 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 da. yes. That's that's that game. Um, Purdue at Nebraska. Nebraska, again, falls short in a close game. They lost by five points in this game to Purdue, 28-23. Nebraska is now 3-6, and 1-5 and five in the Big Ten. Not going to hammer home, you know, Scott Frost this, Scott Frost that, losing close games because we've done that for the last month on this show. Um, but Purdue went on the road, got a – Got a win, and they're five and three, three and two in the Big Ten. So, Purdue's having a decent little year this year. Yeah, should we um, give some credit to Purdue? Because we thought they'd be at the bottom of the Big Ten West. Yeah, yeah, we should. Um, I thought they'd be better better than Illinois, but yeah, <laughs> they're they're uh, over exceeding. I think at this point. I mean. Maybe, but now watch. I'm, I'm going to get on this and say maybe we should praise Purdue and they'll lose the rest of their games. Probably. Maybe. That's the way it happens. But you beat Iowa. You beat Nebraska. I mean, Nebraska at 1-5, and five, like you said. We thought they'd be better than 1-5. and five. We didn't think they'd be at yeah. the bottom. No. Um, <laughs> Purdue, um, in this game, Aiden O'Connell was the guy in this game at quarterback, and so they've got two guys completing over 68% of their passes, and their backup quarterback, I guess, Jack Plummer, has 800 yards passing. Um, Seven touchdowns, no interception. So (laughs) that's that's their backup quarterback. Um, But Purdue's got two of them. um, That we know of. But, you know, so... They're having a nice year. Good for Brom and company there. Moving on. Unless you got anything more, Troy, we can look ahead to the next one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games of the Big Ten. No buys this week. Yep, and before we continue, we've got to give a shout-out to our sponsor, NRP Coffee. Thank you for sponsoring our shows. Not only Go Big or Go Home, but all of our radio shows. So go check them out, com. Free shipping on a lot of products to your door, not all, but most. Go check them out, com. Thank you to Interpeak Coffee. Carry on, youngster. This week's slate of games, not as interesting, I will admit, as last week's, but the show must go on. Ohio State on noon, or on noon, at noon Eastern, Ohio State at Nebraska. Troy. <laughs> well, Nebraska has has a tendency to keep them close and lose the close yeah, ones, they like do. you just talked about, right? <laughs> yeah. But uh, this is a different beast in Ohio State. This this isn't a Purdue team. This isn't a you know Troy, a, Troy, Troy Nebraska's lost all of its games by one possession this year. They're three and six. Yeah, well, yeah, and uh, this is a different beast, youngster. <laughs> all of it <laughs> by one possession. Yeah, well, and uh, there's no Ohio, Ohio State caliber team in that previous schedule. I'm going to say Vegas is – yeah, okay, I'll give you that one. I'll give you that one. But Vegas isn't looking at that Oklahoma game. They're looking at the 1-5 and five Big Ten record. They're looking at Ohio State just coming back in the fourth quarter and putting their fist down and saying, we are the best team in the Big Ten. Vegas is going to favor Ohio State by 14-and-a-half. So close. Uh... 
15, as close as you can be without hitting it on the head. Um, as far as Vegas spreads go, to me, Troy, if you're within like two points, to me that's getting it completely right. Um, obviously, it's nicer if you hit it directly on the head. But, yes, not 14 I, I've half, been pretty two. good this year, though. I'm, I'm patting yeah. myself on the head. I think last I've been you were damn close bad. all year. Yeah, last week you were pretty bad. I, but I was. <laughs> outside of most of last week, um, this entire year, correct, you have been – very good. Um, I think I the, got multiple. I think I've got multiple right on the head though this year. Yeah, and you've got plenty within half a point. You've got a lot within two points. Which, like I said, that's my barometer of getting it correct. So you. Have I been, think the best one was though when I said I don't look up the spreads and then bam, I hit it right <laughs> on the head. Yeah. <laughs> that was like two weeks ago or three weeks ago. I did that. Yeah. <laughs> Ohio State is favored by 15, as they should be. Um, you know, we'll see if Nebraska can keep it close, but obviously, Ohio State should with this, win this one by two scores plus. Yeah, I, I don't want to lock it, youngster. I, I really don't. I mean, Ohio State, honestly, in my mind, they should win by like 20. But I, yeah. I'm not willing to. I'm not willing to. And again, when I say I'm going to lock a game. I'm thinking about my own pocketbook. If I would take the money out, if I would hit the button or make a phone call and say, I need money on this game, I just, I won't do it. I won't do it. I think they should win by 20 or more, but I'm not going to bet my own money on, on this game to lock it. I don't Maybe no. you are. I don't, I don't know. No, me either. <laughs> I think Nebraska can lose by 14 and beat you that way. So. No, I, I wouldn't touch this game at all. I'm with you. Illinois, also at noon. Illinois at Minnesota. Troy. Well, I like what Bielema's doing there. I really do. And, and I think he'll get them into a competitive nature where they're not just wave the white flag and, hey, yeah. you can come trounce on us. So I, I like what he's doing. But, again, and I'm not, I don't want to jinx Gopher fans which means Illinois will probably win this game now. Like you said, they're, they're exceeding expectations, and I think Minnesota should win this game, and I think Vegas thinks the same thing. But I'm going to say Vegas is only going to favor the Gophers by five and a half. Games at Minnesota. You know that. Correct, right? Yeah, five and a half. Okay. They're going to favor Minnesota by five and a half. Minnesota is favored by 14 and a half. <laughs> wow. More love for Minnesota than, than what you thought. Um, Way off on I, that. Yes. I, I think Minnesota should win this game by two scores, um, which is – I don't know about 14 and a half, though, youngster. That's intriguing. They're, they're at home. They're better. I, I don't – I mean, it, it's a lot. At 14 and a half is a good amount. Stay mute. I'm staying mute people. about how good Minnesota is at home because that is how the whole gopher jinx got started because I the remember value. clearly yeah. saying how great Minnesota was at home. doesn't matter if you're Penn State, Ohio State, Wisconsin. They're going to play you tough at home. And then they just pooed the bed the whole year. That's how the jinx started. Fourteen and a half. You know what, youngster? I talk about my own money. I think Illinois can keep it closer than 14 and a half. I really believe that. I'm just saying. I believe, I believe they can, too, but I wouldn't lock it. Um, because Minnesota's That's on you. offensive line. I'm making yeah. a note about my money on Illinois for this game. Okay. Just saying. Minnesota making a note. at home. What's that? I'm just saying, making a no. note with my money, like Minnesota real money. at home um, with a dominating offensive line, I, I think it could – I think they can win by 17. Um, I, I don't think that's unheard of. So I would not lock it personally. But 14 and a half is a lot. Uh, realistically, the Might value be a little is, ding, 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 ding for me when I throw it in a parlay. A smart better would probably bet Illinois. 
but I can certainly see Minnesota running away with it. So, anywho, um, those are the two games at noon. We've got a few here at three thirty. Michigan State at Purdue. Troy, number five, Michigan State at Purdue. Well, we'll see how much love uh, Vegas gives Purdue, but I mean, we just uh, gave them a little. Uh, pat on the back and after Michigan State just dismantled Michigan and came back shows they play for 60 minutes they're undefeated what did you say they're number five in the country right now yeah I don't know if they're going to be five in the college football ranking I think they might slip down to like seven or eight but Michigan State I mean all they've done is one I'm going to say Michigan State on the road Still going to be. I'm still going to make them a seven and a half point favorite. Only three points. <laughs> well, Number five. now I see where Vegas is. They have no, no. faith in Michigan State and Mel Tucker. Just, just so that's like basically Iowa now a toss up. Iowa against Purdue a few weeks ago. Iowa was not heavily favored. Um, and we were like, oh, <laughs> well, then Vegas doesn't believe in Iowa. Well, this is the same exact thing. Michigan State against Purdue. And Vegas is giving Michigan State a three-point advantage. So there you have it. Um, as far as you know, love for Michigan State, and I don't disagree. I think Purdue can throw the ball. I think they can score. I think Michigan State has to control the game with the running game, which they should be able to. Um, but yeah, Michigan State should win this game. But is it possible? Purdue at home. Nationally televised game, throws the ball all over the place and wins 31-27, yeah. Oh, they beat Iowa. Exactly. So, I, yeah, I think it's possible. Um, would I bet it? If I were to bet it, I would bet Michigan State winning by four or more because, again, Michigan State should win this game, but I wouldn't be shocked if Purdue won this game at home after Michigan State just won a heartbreaker against or a heart, whatever, against Michigan. Um, it, heart pumper. I think this is a, they want a heart yes, pumper. Heart pumper. <laughs> I think Purdue it wasn't a breaker. Home, it was a pumper. At, <laughs> Purdue at home against Michigan State after winning a heart pumper. Uh, yeah, I think Purdue can pull the upset. Uh, so, no, I wouldn't lock this. Should Michigan State win? No, I'm not, I wouldn't lock it either. Like I said, Purdue's going to go and they're going to play. I mean, they they. They, they're playing hard, and they, they've exceeded expectations. Yes. It, yeah. I would probably be surprised if they won. Yeah. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't be like, oh my gosh, what in the world no. just happened? There, because I, Michigan. I, Troy, this I'm is surprised that game. A lot. You, you have the but schedule not... up, youngster. Who does Michigan State play next week? Pass Purdue. Michigan State. Michigan State's tired. <laughs> um, they play Maryland. There's no game to look forward to. I I just think they're tired from beating Michigan, personally. Mentally, physically. Now you're going to Purdue, who has all the capability in the world of scoring 30. So I, 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 Michigan State's got a couple weeks until they play Ohio State. Yeah, it's I w- like I said, I I wanted like I would be surprised if Purdue did beat Michigan State, but I wouldn't be like, oh my God, we got to talk about this and go big or go home. I'd be like, holy cow, way to go, Purdue! Now you got a chance to win the Big Ten West. Yeah, uh, surprise, not shocked. That's what I always say. I, there's a lot in sports that surprises me. Um, as there should be. I, that's what an upset is. It's surprising. There's not a lot in sports that shocks me. Like, <laughs> Tennessee, my Tennessee Titans giving up three points to the Chiefs a couple weeks ago, that shocked me. That was shocking. That was unbelievable. I, I, I don't know how it's possible. Tennessee's defense allowed three points to the Kansas City Chiefs. That was shocking to me. Um, that doesn't happen a lot to me. Like, yeah, I could see Purdue win this game by 14 points because they just score 30 and their offense is having it and Michigan State has to throw the ball and they're not able to do it. Yeah, I think it, Purdue wins this game 31-17. That doesn't shock me. Um, no, because if, if Purdue can play downhill, 
Michigan State doesn't have the capability to come back from a big – I mean, they did it against Michigan. But, again, if, if Purdue, in my mind, honestly, and I, I'll say this, based on the records right now, Michigan offense, Purdue offense, I have more faith in a Purdue offense. Just yeah, watching oh, yeah. what I saw, what they did against Iowa. They can I score mean, points I, better than Michigan State can, for sure. We'll see. All right, carry on. No locks Penn yet. State. No locks. No. Penn State at Maryland. Troy. Man. Well, I, I would imagine Vegas is probably a little low on both Penn teams. State. but By the way, both teams, Troy, are 5-3 and three overall, 2-3 and three in the Big Ten. Yeah, I mean, Maryland's quietly just staggering around, but it's Penn State. I'm going to say Vegas is going to give the love to Penn State the way they hung in there with Ohio State. Because, honestly, let's, let's be real, youngster. If, if Penn State plays Maryland the way they played Ohio State, they should win by 21. I don't think that's the line, but I think they're going to say Penn State by 9.5. Very close again. Penn State by 10. So, yeah. Ten. Field goal. Why do they put the line at 10? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, but, Wait, <laughs> yes. Do Penn it 9.5 by... or 10.5. Penn State 31, Maryland 21. Boom, a push. Right. Yeah. Uh, and 10 sounds right to me. Uh, yes, Penn State should win this game. Um, would not shock me if Maryland won either. But, yeah, Penn State's the better team. They clearly have the better defense. Um, offensively, again, I think Maryland realistically can score faster than Penn State does uh, because Talia is a more – consistent quarterback than Sean Clifford is through the air. Um, Clifford can certainly run as well. But, yeah, I, Maryland can score. Um, they can win this game, again, 31-17, just like Purdue can against Michigan State. I don't think they will. Uh, but it would not shock me to see Maryland win this game. Um, but, again, Penn State should win at 10. I, I'm not locking either way. No, nah, either am I. I'm just glad I was close on that one. Yeah, two of them. You've been half a point away. Also at 3.30, Troy, your two favorite teams, Wisconsin at Rutgers. See, this is the thing. I'm liking I'm liking what Chiano is doing over at Rutgers, and this kind of huh. scares me. Uh-huh. But my Badgers, and and I just, I kind of lobbied for him a little bit with before in the AP, right? Like how do you, how do you let that Wisconsin team sit there, a team that should be seven and one? But I'm not. I don't want to be that Wisconsin homer youngster. I want to. I want to clear my mind. But the way this Wisconsin defense plays, I I mean, they set the offense up so good every week. And I watch that defense play, and it's like, my God. If Jim Leonard is not a head coach in the next two years, there are people out there that are out of their mind. This guy, and granted, Paul Christ has to recruit them, but Paul Christ isn't the big recruiter. We talked about I recruiting, <laughs> blah, blah, Troy. blah. Right? Troy, if I, were, if I were LSU or USC, I'd throw a lot of money at Jim Leonard. Because he's he, he's clearly one of the top defensive minds in college football, and if you're LSU, there's no question Jim Leonard will be able to recruit defensive talent to LSU. It doesn't matter who. I don't want to lose Jim lose. Leonard <laughs> no, because I know you youngster, don't. we've talked about this is the thing. This Wisconsin defense, you, there are no names on this Wisconsin defense this year that are sitting here going first round draft pick, first round draft pick, first round draft pick. We don't have that. We don't have the Watt brothers. We don't have this. We don't have that. This is just the unit and the way they play. And what they did, I know it's Iowa, but I watched them all year, and what they did to Penn State in week one, 
again, I'm not blaming the defense when the offense can't move the sticks. And that is the frustrating part. So I look at it, Wisconsin, but Wisconsin has no offense. They really don't. Graham Mertz is Jack Cohn plus one. Okay, a little bit. Once in a while, you get a good throw. I'll take Jack Cohn right now over Graham Mertz. I told you this two weeks ago. I know. And I I think Vegas is going to think the same way, the way the AP voters are, Wisconsin receiving votes because they beat Iowa. I think Wisconsin's only going to be favored by four and a half. (laughs) As per always, you're not giving as much love as Vegas does. Uh, Wisconsin by 12. (laughs) No. uh, No. No, and actually, (laughs) we talked about Illinois before. I'm going to make a note of this. My money might Uh go on Rutgers. It's not going to be 12. No way in hell. You don't think Wisconsin can win by two touchdowns against Rutgers, Trump? Nope. Nope, and here's why. You want me to go off right now? I ran out of Rockstar. I'm sitting in my driveway. My wife is texting me, where are you at? I thought you were home. I am home. I'm in my driveway. <laughs> Iowa Wisconsin. set the game up on a platter for Wisconsin to win by 40. They won With by the 20. turnovers and the defense, and they can't do it because the offense – Stinks. Troy, I will take Rutgers Iowa. and the points. I will take Rutgers and the points. Wisconsin <laughs> is going to make me get more gray hair next week. Yeah, they might score 10, but Wisconsin is going to score what, 20? I, after, after the game last week, youngster, I have given up on the offense. You know what? Jim Leonard's probably going to be gone this year or next year, Paul Christ needs to go to the NFL and get a coordinator to come to his squad to coach this kid because I'm just frustrated with it. They should have scored 40 against Iowa, and they scored 20. They had every opportunity to do it. You wanted me to go off. You get me worked up. You haven't got me this worked up in probably four or five weeks. Wisconsin, Wisconsin offense sucks. Wisconsin scored 27 against Iowa. I think they can score 30 against Rutgers. I think they can hold Rutgers to 17. I'm no taking Rutgers points, in the points. Make a note, I, I, make a note youngster. Rutgers uh-huh. keeps this close. Wisconsin wins by 10. That's it. Troy likes Rutgers plus 12. There you go. Mental note. It's, well, more than a mental note. It's written down. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I will not lock with you uh, because I think Wisconsin oh. should win by two scores. My gosh, but, young sir, now I need to go check my blood pressure because you got me going again. Sorry. These next two games shouldn't get your blood pressure. Blood, blood pressure. Oh. Blood pressure going. Iowa at Northwestern, second to last game. What Iowa team is going to show up? I mean, Iowa at Northwestern. Oh, gee. Northwestern is not that good this year, but eh, they might. Eh, yeah, yeah. Um, Iowa by. Well, they are supposedly better than the Badgers because they're ranked 19th. I, Iowa by nine and a half. Iowa by twelve. And again, I, 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 I would want to take Iowa um, because Northwestern's bad this year. They really are, and Iowa's defense is really good. Um, Iowa's coming off two straight losses, and they can flex their muscles as the better team. Uh, their defense should definitely flex the muscles. Um, I would lock Iowa, to be honest with you, because I think they really should win by two scores plus. They should, um, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Not at If it was at home, I would, not at, at Northwestern. Okay. Fitzgerald has too much pride as a coach. And I, I watched Iowa last week, youngster, and I know that Badger defense is really good. Yeah. But – I don't think Iowa 
when they got to number two and they had all this and they had all that, and you look at the two losses, now I'm going to go back to my old days as a player, as a coach. There is a psychological what, – what, what, what do I want to say here? Uh, I guess doubt in my mind. Like we were number two three weeks ago. And now right. we've been manhandled two weeks in a row. Right. We lost to Purdue. We just got our asses whooped against Wisconsin because this is the thing. This is where that AP, oh, they're 19th. They, they lost 20 to 7. No. Like I went off on my rant, they should have been demolished like 40 to 7. Like they were bad. Like I didn't see anything in that game. Like, I was nervous for Wisconsin against that game, and that's why the phone was in the other room. I didn't want to deal with it. And this game's going on, and I'm sitting here with a smile on my face, and I'm cracking adult beverages going, I love this game. This is awesome. And then I get pissed off when they kick a field goal. Iowa was not that good. And if they're that good, they should be able to hang in the game with Wisconsin. And the score says they hung in the game with Wisconsin. But if you watch the game, they didn't hang in the game with Wisconsin. That's the bottom line. I don't think they're that good. And I think you go to Northwestern, we've got to prove a point. I love Fitzgerald in Northwestern. This guy should have been an NFL coach a long time ago, but he is an ultimate college guy. And he's going to motivate his players it's at Northwestern. I'm actually, young sir, I'm looking at parlays this week. I'm going to take Rutgers, Illinois, Northwestern. I'm not locking this game. I'm not. I'm going, and I'm going to throw money, and I'm going to, I'm going to make this crazy parlay, and maybe it'll win me money. I don't know. Maybe. Last game, 7.30 Eastern, Fox, Indiana at Michigan, Troy. Indiana's still looking for their first Big Ten win. And they're not going to get it here either. I, at Michigan, Jim Harbaugh is sitting there. He's probably got half his boxes packed now because he lost to Michigan State. He's not even prepared for it. Well, it's Indiana. I know that you were big on them last year. I'm not. I'm going to say Vegas. I'm going to say Michigan State by 12 and a half. Our Mich- Michigan, sorry. Michigan by 19 and a half. So closer to three scores than two. Uh, I don't know. Maybe this is my fourth team in that parlay. I don't know. 19, 19 and a half is a lot. That is. Yeah. Michigan will be That's at home lot. after a loss. Indiana's defense just gave up like 38 to Maryland. I mean, I could see yeah, Michigan winning Yeah, but like you said, young sir, we know Maryland's got a good offense. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think 19, 19 and a half. And a half? Yeah. I usually don't I like agree. these big spreads. To get a what, lock you know in. What you know what? Oh, my God, though. Yeah, just to get a lock in. <laughs> I don't know if I just want to do it to get a lock in, but I'm just thinking. <laughs> Really, yeah. nineteen and a half? Without Penix, I I can't lock it because yes, Michigan can win by three scores. With Penix, there's well, there's they should nice crush them. They yeah. should crush them. No, we're not going to lock. No locks this week. None. All right. Just got the uh, the note. You like Rutgers plus twelve, and I like what was it? Iowa minus twelve, actually. So, anywho. That's it. That's it for the show. We have uh, came to its conclusion, and we, as always, <laughs> want to thank Inner Peak Coffee for sponsoring all of the shows that we do, whether they're on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or who knows next week when we will do our basketball season preview, which there is certainly some good teams and players to talk about. As always, with the Big Ten, hopefully the Big Ten can get a winner, although hopefully not next year because I'll be rooting for Duke because I am a Duke fan and it is Coach K's final year. So if there was Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go Badgers. Go Badgers. Go Blue Devils. There you go. But, yes, we will be recording. (laughs) 
a Big Ten basketball season preview next week at some point. It'll on the up. Inner Peak Coffee studio line, make sure you check out our sponsor, innerpeakcoffee.com. For the youngster, I'm the old man. We'll get back at you next week, same place, same time. Talk to you soon. <laughs>